If you don't know who Vince Coleman is, I'll explain it as quickly and efficiently as I can, and I'll start with this stat. In the modern era of baseball, which is the year 1900 to present day, there have only been 8 instances of a player stealing 100 or more bases in a single season, and it was only done by 4 different players. Dodgers legend Maury Wills and Cardinals Hall of Famer Lou Brock each achieved this feat once. Ricky Henderson, the greatest stolen base threat in the history of the sport, accomplished this feat three times, including the modern record of 130 stolen bases in 1982. This means the only other player to ever steal 100 plus bases in a season matched Ricky Henderson's record of accomplishing it three times, and of course it was done by Vince Coleman. Vince Coleman probably has the greatest stolen base prime of any player not named Ricky Henderson. Those three 100 stolen base seasons came within the first three seasons of his career. He holds the record for most stolen bases by a rookie when he swiped 110 bags in 1985. He would end up leading the league in stolen bases for the first six seasons of his career. Coleman's 549 stolen bases through age 28 are the third most of any player ever through age 28. In addition to that, Coleman's 752 career stolen bases ranks sixth all time, which he also achieved in far fewer play appearances than others around him near the top of the leaderboard. In fact, Coleman played in 1,371 games in his career. Through a player's first 1,371 games in his career, Coleman ranks second all-time in stolen bases. Only Ricky Henderson was able to steal more bases in a player's first 1,371 games. Clearly, Vince Coleman was one of the best stolen base threats in baseball history, and we're here to talk about his 1986 season. That year, Coleman played in 154 games and came to the plate 670 times. He also had a phenomenal stolen base season, stealing 107 bases and only getting caught 14 times. Despite the historic stolen base season, Coleman had a terrible season overall. Coleman slashed 232 with a 301 on base and 280 slugging for a 581 OPS and an adjusted OPS of 62. 62. Among 127 qualified players in 1986, Coleman's 62 adjusted OPS ranks 124th, his 581 OPS ranks 126th, and his 1.3 WAR ranks 101st. Offensively, he was one of the worst players that year, and yet he holds one of the top single stolen base records during that dreadful season. To put in perspective how much of an anomaly the season is, let's compare it to other seasons in the past. Among all players in MLB history to have as many or more plate appearances as Coleman's in 1986, Coleman's 62 adjusted OPS is the 6th lowest all time in a single season. Truly one of the worst offensive seasons ever in baseball history for someone that played as much as Coleman did. He's also in the bottom 10 in total bases and OPS. Up until 1986, the most stolen bases a player had in a single season with an adjusted OPS at or lower than 62 was 58 by Jim Manning of the Kansas City Cowboys in 1889. That is a team I have never heard of until 30 seconds ago and I'm guessing you've never heard of them either. In the modern era up until that point, the record for most stolen bases in a single season with an adjusted OPS at or lower than 62 was 46 by Willie Wilson in 1978. In fact, through the 1986 season, there were only 9 instances of a player stealing at least 30 bases and having an adjusted OPS at or lower than 62. As you could see, Coleman has more than double the second place record Wilson had. I would also like to mention that in 1978, Willie Wilson came into the game as a sub more often than he started and had fewer play appearances than games he subbed in for. What does that mean? That means Wilson pinch ran a ton during that season. He had the benefit of stealing bases without needing to get on base himself. He actually had more stolen bases as a substitute than in games he started. Vince Coleman has exactly one stolen base as a sub. Let's also compare Coleman's 1986 season to the other seven 100 stolen base seasons. In Ricky Henderson's three seasons, he had an adjusted OPS of 122, 135, and 139. He also posted crazy high on-base percentages in those seasons. Makes sense. 
He got on base a ton and stole bases because of the ample opportunities. Lou Brock posted an adjusted OPS of 110, but just like Henderson, had a high on base percentage. His 368 on base percentage was over 40 points higher than the league average. Maury Wills actually had an adjusted OPS of 99, below average. However, just like Brock, his on base percentage was solid, 20 points higher than average that season. He also led the league in singles with 179 and had over 200 hits overall. Just like the previous two, ample opportunity. Coleman posted a 368 and 320 on base percentage in his two other seasons, but his 301 is by far the lowest. He's the only player with at least 100 stolen bases to have an on base percentage lower than league average. The second highest number of stolen bases by a player in a single season with an on-base percentage at or lower than Coleman's is 60, most recently done by Jose Reyes in 2005 when he stole 60 bases with a 300 on-base percentage. Coleman was 13 short of doubling that of second place. We will probably never see a season like Coleman's ever again, to be that good at stealing bases while also being that poor of a hitter. A good recent comparison to Coleman's season would be Billy Hamilton's in 2015 when he stole 57 bases with a 274 on base percentage. Still a lot fewer stolen bases than Coleman's in 1986. Coleman may have been bad at getting on base in 1986, but when he did, you just knew he was going to steal successfully.